Take a look at these foods. Which ones are you eating? Which ones should you be eating? Good morning. I'm Eric Ramirez. I'm Laura Bechtel. I'm Talia Coria. And I'm Lizzie Trago. When looking at the American methods of cultivation, distribution, and accessibility of food, how does it contribute to the overall low quality and unhealthy eating habits of adults in the United States? Laura? It's no secret that our ancestors before us were eating healthier than we do today. According to the Red Center analysis of Nielsen data, it showcased that almost 60% of advertising funds is spent promoting unhealthy foods, such as sweet and savory snacks. We need to alter this to healthy food so we can create more awareness to what we should be eating. However, in order to take away from the overpowering advertisements, Michelle Obama in 2011 created the process which is known as My Plate, an attempt to undermine the overpowering advertisements. My Plate is creatively organized to inspire consumers to eat healthier at mealtimes. Because My Plate is organized as a pie chart, it, it organizes parts comparing parts of a whole, comparing fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy, eliminating junk food overall to proportionally showcase what we should be eating on our plates. Unlike the My Pyramid, which is represented as a pyramid, which does not proportionally showcase how much food should be on our plates. Despite the efforts made with My Plate and the multi-million dollar advertising system, the USDA and CSPI created a line, a line graph representing the color, calories per person per year from 1970 to 2010, showcasing that Americans are eating more grains, meat, poultry, and fish, fats and oils, caloric sweeteners on their daily average lives, and have still and still eat the same amount of dairy, fruits, and vegetables today. Eric? Thank you. As Laura said, the caloric intake has increased over the years, which can also be attributed to GMO use, for which they are cheaper and abundant. But what does the American diet really contain? GMOs. GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organisms. These are new organisms not created naturally to help grow crops. Organisms, GMOs contain chemicals and preservatives so food can last longer and look much more appealing, just as shown in this image. The non-GMO tomato is much smaller and less appealing compared to the GMO tomato. Therefore, Americans tend to purchase a GMO tomato rather than a non-GMO tomato. According to this graph from the USDA, since 1997 to 2012, there has been an increase in GMO use on the agricultural scene, and it is only increasing within every year. According to this graph from the Center for Food Safety, the yellow-colored countries indicate that food labels are required to be shown in GMO foods. We can see that the U.S. is not one of these countries. Therefore, Americans do not know if they're eating foods with GMOs or without GMOs. Although GMOs are somewhat toxic, they are also efficient. They, pr they help produce a higher quantity and quality of foods, such as shown in this image. The Roundup Ready GMO produces a larger quantity and speed up the, the production of them. Despite their efficiency, they are still harmful to the environment. With excess fertilizer and excess pesticide runoff, they're they're still harmful to, to the environment. With toxics, with toxins going into the waterways, and eventually reaching our tables. Lizzie? Organic foods do not contain these unhealthy and adverse GMOs, which, as Eric stated, are not nutritionally valuable and can even cause harm to us or the environment. However, organic foods are significantly more expensive than normal foods, making them inaccessible to low-income groups. Additionally, as Laura stated, non-organic and cheaper foods are advertised more often in media, making them more accessible to these low-income groups. Andrew Agarwal, a cardiovascular disease doctor, certifies the link between socioeconomic status and health by stating that lower energy adjusted diet costs was associated with issues of nutrient adequacy of diets of lower income groups. His study showed that participants with the lowest intakes of beneficial and healthy nutrients or associated with a lower diet cost and therefore a lower economic status. The surrounding environment can also have similar effects on low-income families. David Buckridge, professor of biostatistics, attributes the obesity epidemic in America to increased caloric intake in the form of added sugars. In America, beverages such as carbonated soft drinks are the main source of added sugar in people's everyday diets. As we can see in this map, as median personal income decreases as shown by the lighter green regions, Carbonated soft drink sales increases as shown by the darker red regions. This shows that the increase in caloric intake in the form of added sugars is characteristic of low income regions. This map from the Department of Agriculture shows the prevalence of food deserts in America. A food desert is a region which has an increased access to cheap, fast food restaurants and convenience stores, but a limited access to supermarkets which contain healthier foods. As we can see, food deserts are clustered in the south and the southwest along Arizona. 
This map from the United States Diabetes Surveillance System shows the overall health of Americans by region, specifically the percentages of persons with diabetes. As we can see, people with diabetes are clustered around the south and the southwest in Arizona, again. When you view the two maps beside each other, it is clear to see the correlation between low income groups and poor health. Poor health being characterized by diabetes, which is a disease caused by unhealthy eating habits. This further confirms the idea that the unequal distribution of healthy foods causes the poor health of a person due to their socioeconomic status. Talia? Thank you. Coming off of the economic factors in which Lizzie stated, the increasing wages of 2017 are affecting the amount of time that adults have to eat because they are spending more time working. According to the Social Indicators research, trends in secondary eating time have increased a lot due to the extension of work hours and the higher wages which require adults to spend more time at work. Therefore, it is no surprise that so many adults choose to pick up fast food rather than making a home-cooked meal a priority. Yet, although there may seem like there's a variance on fast food menus, there's very little difference between the healthier options and the normal options. Think of McDonald's. You would expect the Caesar salad to be healthier than a double Big Mac, right? Well, actually, you're wrong. The Caesar salad contains more fat, more sodium, and overall, it is more calories than a double Big Mac. This is just one example of how many food labels can be very misleading, as Laura stated. Customers would expect a Caesar salad to be healthier, but they do not focus on things such as the dressing, which makes it unhealthier. The prevalence of obesity has increased a lot since 1975, and it is still increasing today. This coincides with the increased use of GMOs, as Eric stated, because GMOs are more abundant in cheap food. Now, today, two-thirds of American adults are overweight or obese, which is a very concerning number. There is an upward trend because of the amount of time, as I earlier stated, that adults are spending at work. Overall, our main solution is awareness. Economically, we need to be aware of how, where, and what types of food we are spending our money on. For example, food stamps are already in place and attempt to solve this epidemic. However, most people are not aware that food stamps can only be used to purchase foods which must be cooked and eaten at home. This serves to be an issue for a majority of people that need these food stamps, like the homeless. One solution to avoiding GMOs is buying 100% organic foods. Instead of shopping at big chain food markets such as Walmart or Publix, purchase at Whole Foods, or even better, at your local farmer's market. Well, according to Melissa Deanne Smith, a nutritionist, shop mostly, shop, shop mostly on the outer edges where the fresh produce meats and less processed foods than tend to be displayed. The United States still lacks guidance to find cleaner and healthier food. What we should be doing is bring back the My Plate system and advertise this to create awareness to all Americans around the United States. However, one size does not fit all, where there are still ve vegans and vegetarians who are limited to what they can eat. Another thing is that parents can start early with their children to teach them about nutrition and how to eat in moderation. However, one thing that might hinder this solution is the difference in social, social groups where certain cultures and religions tend to eat more or less of certain foods and abstain from others. Therefore, overall, if awareness is spread, generations to come will be able to avoid health problems and hopefully they will pay attention to what they're consuming. Thank you. Okay, guys, this has a series of questions. I'm literally going to go your right to left. It's just easier that way. Um, so, Lizzie, you're up first. Uh, describe how the content of the team presentation was changed as a result of the group discussions. Well, initially, Laura's personal perspective was social cultural. In her, in her research paper, she discussed the difference between American methods and Mediterranean methods because they're a lot healthier over in the Mediterranean where they eat fat, like oils and things like that. But we decided not to include that in the actual content of our presentation because our presentation was mostly focused around the American methods of cultivation and comparing that to the Mediterranean kind of overrided our overall presentation. All right, thank you. Laura, uh, in the future, what change would you make to your group norms uh, and how would you expect that to improve the team presentation? Uh, well, in the future, my schedule is very busy, and so is Talia's and Eric's with their busy athletic schedule. So in the future, I, we would change how to, to change, because uh, initially we planned to meet after school, but not in the 150 to 30 period. So Talia here suggested that we meet from the 150 to 30 because our athletics do not start until 2.30. Thank you. Um, next up. What was the strongest counter-argument to the solution or 
the solution that your team identified and why so? The strongest counter argument for us, well, our main solution was awareness, and that was kind of a very broad topic, so we decided to break it down into six different factors, but spreading awareness is kind of difficult because obviously you can't reach out to every single person, and when Laura was talking about the MyPlate system, so that's a government, that was implemented by the government, but we can't really change what the government has decided. All right. <laughs> uh, Eric. Describe an argument from one of your peers' um, individual reports that made you think differently about the team's solution. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Describe an argument that one of the three uh, peers in your group made that made you think differently about your team's solution. Well, when writing my paper, I saw that Laura's topic, social lens, was very, it like, it brought a lot to the table compared to my information that I had. So I kind of had to like shape up my information to fit hers and for it all, all to make sense. All right, thank you. You guys can breathe. <laughs>